Hello everyone, I hope you have seen the part one of the video uh, series of this endotronics, uh, the course uh, and I have explained the theory in that and uh, now what I am doing in this series, I am trying to attach the demo videos along with the discussions I have done with you in the part one. So I have discussed how we do root canal opening. So this is a video of, uh, so for this demo, I have selected uh, upper eight. Basically, I wanted to show you that the steps which I have told you, which I have discussed with you in the theory part of this uh, training series, this steps, if you follow in the right order, you can actually open any tooth without any problem. So this is the x-ray, which is uh, from buckle of uh, the extracted tooth. And you can see the chamber is quite low. I'll show you another view, but uh, this is this view you can't have clinically. It's from mesial or distal. We see the mesial buccal roots, the distal buccal root, and the palatal root. Remember, this is an eight, and this is not a usual six or a seven. So we'll go to the demo video. So I have mounted this tooth on a rubber dam and I'll play the video so you can see the anatomy you can see everything you this is the this is the mesial side this is the distal side this is the buccal and this is the palatal so I've just fast forwarded the video so I can make it short I'll pause it at every moment where I want to discuss something let's start it so my first burr which I'm going to use is going to be a round diamond to go through enamel and I'm going to make a small cavity, small triangular cavity, which will be like 60 to 70 percent of the final shape of my cavity. Let's see. So sorry for the vibration of the video, but that's the best I could do with it. So this is a round diamond burr. And what I'm doing, I'm just trying to create a triangle in the enamel. Just try to reach the dentine. Just trying to reach the dentine. And I'm just checking all the time to, and to trying to show it to you. So if you go back to the theory part, you can see what shape a molar, upper molar has. And I'm just uh, removing the enamel and I'm not just doing, remember, I'm not just doing a pinpoint opening. I'm making the shape of my final excess cavity a 60% of my final shape. If my final shape is going to be a triangle, a bigger one, this is going to be a smaller one. And once I'm into dentine, you can see the yellow color of the dentine. And then I would shift to, you can see the small cavity is not a point entry. The next word I would take would be a round carbide, not a diamond. Now I want to discuss something right here. Whenever you are cutting dentine, please don't, don't do not use the diamond points. Use the carbides and uh, they cut dentine very fast. Uh, and the uh, patient really feels very less sensitivity or sensation. Sometimes we get these lower molars which are very sensitive and you are not able to open, patient is jumping all on the corner. I am telling you most of the time you you are using a diamond burr. Now diamond burr in dentine creates a lot of heat and th this is not good for the pulp. The pulp is really sensitive. So your patient will never let you do, let you work in a hot tooth or hot lower six or seven. So in this such kind of a case, there is a tip when you are you feeling such kind of difficulty. You have given enough anesthesia, you have followed the proper protocol of anesthesia, then also it's not working, you have waited for 15-20 minutes. Then take a fresh carbide round burr and just chop the dentine. And the, you will get a point of the pulp. If you do not have any other anesthetic technique in your armamentarium and you only have intrapulpal. Now intrapulpal is very painful, so be very careful guys. And once you have the opening, that uh, pinpoint opening, then you use your intrapulpal local anesthesia. But use a fresh carbide in such kind of patients where the patient is having pain. Alright, so that is one tip. Now you see the color of the tooth and the color of, you know, this is all yellow. So let's go ahead with it. So see the color. Now I'm using a long shank carbide. Sometimes I do use and I'm checking how deep can be the chamber. So you can do this. You can go outside the tooth and you can see that it should be your chamber roof. If this is the roof, this is the floor of your pulp chamber, your roof should be at the level of CJ. But as we have noticed in the x-ray that it is below the level of the CJ. So this is a long shank carbide. 
and my uh, my slight focus is to first find the bigger canal so i am just enlarging the whole cavity now do take care that see the color of the floor and the color of the walls is same it's yellow that means i'm still not i've still not reached the pearl chamber and i'm going deeper and i'm not just doing pinpoint again i'm just extending the outline external outline to the internal outline the external outline is on the outside of the tooth and i'm just following the internal outline i'm sorry so here we go i think i have rewinded a little bit sorry sorry for that okay so keep clearing the debris now you see i have felt a drop i felt a drop and you will see the color of the floor and the color of the walls has changed the floor appears gray and the external outline appears what you call uh, yellow the yellow is, is so you can see the color of the floor the chamber now i have a, my bur has dropped into the chamber now i'll get to give you another tip if you feel that you you are not getting the chamber you are not feeling confident enough i'm going to the next step i have to wait so what you do is uh, at this point when you feel you are about to feel a drop put your air rotor aside if you're a fresher if you're starting new take a carbide round bur in your micro motor or your slow speed and with that you can feel the drop and go for the bigger canal first for upper go try to drop into the palatal side palatal canal side or in the lower go to the distal side so i have first tried to open the palatal in this 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 particular point and what i have done next i have told you that you need a spoon excavator so i have taken a spoon excavator and i put a long chunk spoon excavator i put the spoon excavator inside the chamber and i am feeling it up so wherever there is roof this is this is the roof this was the roof now i have a hole in it so wherever there is overhanging of the roof my spoon excavator will get engaged and i'll come to know where there is overhangs and i'll remove the overhangs with a round bur if you're comfortable with the round bur we do it with that i would go with a safe end sometimes uh, to remove the overhangs or with a round bur so this was the roof and it will open up like this okay this is the idea this is what we are trying to do so uh, this is my spoon excavator and i'm just seeing where all i have the overhangs and this is the next bur in the amentarium and this is the safe end carbide i'll just go a little bit back so the next bur is a safe end carbide now this is a safe end it's rounded at the end and it has diamond on the rest of the shaft so when it touches the floor it doesn't cut the floor because floor has a lot of information floor has the dentinal map which can lead us to the uh, to the uh, orifices so we are not supposed to cut the floor we are not supposed to cut the floor and if you notice when i was using my round bur once i was into the chamber i was cutting it on the out stroke out stroke always i showed you before also so once you drop into the chamber don't go down don't drill down don't drill down into the chamber drill out drill out drill out now i'm going to remove the remaining overhangs and just diverge the walls and smoothen it out at this point you can use your dg16 endo explorer to see where which canal you have found okay so this is the bur i'm going to use next and i'm just shaping it up i'm just removing the overhangs diverging the walls I just uh, fast forwarded the video so that you, you know we yeah, save some time. So the whole process was it took me 10 minutes to open it up. There's some pulp tissue now again I am feeling where all I can feel the overhang. So what I'm basically doing I'm taking guidance from the roof. I'm taking where it is so that because it is 8 you don't know there is different kind of anatomy. So if you're taking guidance from the roof so this was my DG16 and I'm using my DG16 to feel the canal this is the palatal canal and i have found my palatal and this is the mesobuccal canal this one and i am looking for distobuccal now eight is it's very weird you don't know where the distobuccal is there is some overhang i will remove that also at this particular point where i marked 
and I'll take my burr and I'll remove my EX24, whichever burr you are comfortable. I'm comfortable with the EX24 to remove this small, small overhangs and just at the same time shaping the wall. I can use round burr, but with the round, if you go into the wall, you land up gouging the wall like this. So I do, I avoid using that. Again, I'm just removing the debris. I think I have to reduce the zoom. Okay. So I am feeling the overhangs again. Okay, just cleaning it up. Feeling where the canals are. Now I feel I could have uh, be a little conservative on the palatal side. Just irrigating, removing all the debris. Just removing. There was, a, there was a little bit overhang still in the disto buckle. So you can notice the difference in the color. The color is grey out for the floor and yellow for the walls. So this is the point where I feel there is some overhang. I feel, I felt that disto buckle is under this. So I thought let me just remove the overhang. So that uh, now with the overhangs, I'll have the exact shape of the chamber what it was. So when I remove the roof and take guidance from the roof again and again, I'm telling this, this is very, very important. Yeah, and then take guidance from the roof, take guidance from the roof always. And you will always have the root canal orifice in the corner of the chamber. All right. And I removed that and I am irrigating it again. But I, it was not there unfortunately. I thought it would be, it was, and whenever this happens, you are not able to find it. Take your DG16, start probing the whole line. So what I did next, to probe the whole line between the uh, mesiobuccal canal to the palatal canal. And in between I found my canal. Let's see where I found it. See, this is where my disto buckle was. If you can see this, I can enlarge it. Oh no. All right, just give me a second. Okay. So this is where my disto buckle canal is. Okay, can you see this? This is the point where I have my meso buckle, this is the point where I have my palatal and on the same line, this is the point where I have my disto buckle, this point, meso buckle, palatal. So uh, without touching the floor, without, uh, you know, doing any, any kind of uh, stupidity and just doing the whole opening, I have seen experienced practitioners opening the whole tooth with a single burr. This is the burr we like and we will do it. I don't do it still. This opening took me 10 minutes. Uh, if I was not shooting a video, it would, might have taken me 5 minutes, but I would never change my technique. So I would tell you guys, this works. This has worked for me in a lot of cases. In almost every case, very rarely it will not work in like 1 in 1000 cases or 2 in 100 cases. I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't work, but most of the time I've found success with its anterior or posterior. When you're opening an anterior tooth, use a smaller burr or not these large birds, use smaller round birds, smaller uh, safe end birds. So let's go ahead, what else is remaining in the video. So this is the sister buckle, now I'm marking the meso buckle for you with the DG16, this is the meso buckle mm -mm -mm -mm. and this is the palatal. Okay, so the opening is done. So, I'll just yeah, review the whole technique for you once. So, here you see this is a picture I took after shooting the video. So, this is the mesobuckle canal. And at this particular point, you can, you know, use a 10 number file to explore your canals or a 6 number depending or 8 number, whichever. And this is the palatal canal, this particular point. Do notice the change in the color. This is this helps a lot. And this is the 
distobuccal canal. All, all the three canals are in the same line. All right. So let me just review the technique for you. All right. Uh, sorry, just give me a second. Yeah. So if I review the technique for you, once I have, you know. So uh, once I have diagnosed my case, once I know this is a case of irreversible pulpitis or any other kind of peripical pathology, I know the goal, what I have to do. At uh, one point when we enter the pulse chamber, this is an <laughs> extracted tooth. In the patient, you will find a red spot. That red spot will indicate that it is the opening of your pulp chamber roof. Now, whenever you are in doubt, you feel you don't know whether this is the pulp chamber roof or whether this is a perforation. You can use your apex locator if at that red point, if your apex locator shows length, that means it's a perforation. If it doesn't show length, don't worry, it's not a perforation. And uh, I told you, I'll just review the technique for you. First of all, do remember if I find this kind of sound tooth without any caries or anything, I'll never do RCO in it. Until unless I'm sure of the diagnosis, until unless I know why this tooth has become non-vital, I would never ever do the uh, RCO in it. Uh, okay, I will never start the root canal because then the pain of the patient is not going to go away and the patient is not going to be very happy with us. So uh, after reading the x-ray, I use a round diamond depending on the size of the tooth, premolar, smaller diamond, anterior, even smaller than that, that and posterior you can use a bigger diamond. So use the round, uh, the size of the diamond, round diamond according to the size of the tooth. And then once I was into dentine after cutting enamel, uh, making 60% of the final shape, I shifted to a round carbide. And carbide you can use a long shank, short shank, shorts, whatever size you decide according to the tooth. And then I have removed the dentine and when you remove the dentine, keep following the color of the wall and the color of your cavity is same. That means you have not reached the floor. But as you go down, down, down and suddenly you might see a red spot. So that means you have reached the chamber if you are treating a case of irreversible pulpitis. Or if you are treating a non-vital tooth, uh, you, can, you may feel a drop. So once you feel the drop, cut it on the outstroke. Remove the roof of the pulp, cut it on the outstroke. And if you don't know where all the roof is, take a spoon excavator, make the uh, hole, I mean the roof, uh, roof is so big that you can put in a spoon excavator and feel where the overhangs are. Feel the overhangs, use a round bar to remove or use a safe end to remove and give the shape. So after round carbide, de-roofing, we call it de-roofing. So we open the lid, so we de-roof and then uh, we take a spoon excavator, check where all my uh, roof is and then you take a safe end i showed you it's rounded at the end and you finish your cavity and you use a dg16 to locate your canals and you can use an orifice opener i showed you the orange color was sx from the protepper system to mark the distobuckle i would use it 2 to 3 mm into the canal that's it and just to open them a little bit so that's the whole demo the next part i will shoot soon if uh, you guys like it please share it and please just encourage me so i can do a little more and thank you everybody, thank you all the guys who did it and who complimented the video and who liked the video and watched the whole thing. Let's do it and let's uh, let just help each other out and the profession and let's do very well. Let's take Indian dentistry to that another level and that can only happen with when all of us come together and give up and teach all of you and, you, and we can learn from you all. Thank you all and thank you very much for watching this. I hope, hope you enjoy it. Leave a comment and do get in touch with me if you have any doubts. Thank you.